Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and a warm welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so first we welcome Liz and Jane. You're our first pair on the show this afternoon. How do you two know each other? We are sisters. Jane's the eldest, I'm the youngest. There are two more in between and we live quite close to each other. Two more, so four sisters? Four sisters, yes. Wow, it's a formidable team. It is. <laughs> where are you from? Devon. Now then, Jane, what are you hoping is going to come up this afternoon? I would love if there was something to do with literature, because I really like reading, and I've taught it as well. So. And you've taught as well? Yes, yes. Oh, wow, so, yes. yeah, literature then. Yeah. I think you're going to do very well. Um, very best of luck to the pair of you. Great to Thank have you, you here. You. Next, we welcome back Serene and Olivia. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two cracks at the pointless final. This is your second chance. Um, remind us how you did last time. Um, we crashed and burned, I'm afraid, on the first round. You did? What was it? The sport, it was. Oh, it was the yeah. Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Um, Olivia, what do you do in your spare time? Um, well, last year I did the London to Brighton mini run in my vintage car. In a vintage mini? Yep. Still going strong? Yeah, it's great. I love it. And uh, how about you, Serena? What do you do in your spare time? Um, I sing in a couple of choirs. Not just one choir, two choirs? Yes, two. What, are they different choirs? Yeah, completely. Um, one is more church music and the other one is more pop. Very exciting. Well, very best of luck to the pair of you. And next, we welcome Bob and Bill. How do you two know each other? Uh, we met when we were about two years old, actually. We, um... We were playing in our little red cars in the street and we bumped into each other and we've just been friends ever since. Pretty well, yeah. Swap details. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right. And been friends since. Bob, what's your, what's your area of expertise? I'm a chartered architectural technologist. I draw building plans yep. for house extensions. That's just posh for builder. Bob the builder. That's, that's, <laughs> uh, that's I'm afraid that's right. Bob the architectural <laughs> technologist. That just it. doesn't work. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Uh, well, very best of luck to the pair of you. It's great to have you here. You. And finally, we've got Dan and Danny. How do you two know each other? Um, we went to the same university and Danny applied too late to get a room, so he slept on our floor for about four months. <laughs> and you're still friends, yeah. despite yeah, so all of that. Him. Where were you at university? Hull. At Hull. Danny, what did you do at Hull? Apart from I did uh, sport science. Sport science. Yeah. Catching. <laughs> catching. <laughs> Football studies. Bit of, <laughs> bit of throwing, bit of catching. Um, Dan, how about you? Um, I did British politics. British politics. <laughs> All right then, Danny. All right. So let's just see whose degree does them better on this afternoon's show. Um, well, very best of luck to you. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. There's only one person left for me to introduce. It's rumoured that he carries about his person a little black book full of his favourite obscure facts. I don't believe that for a second. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Oh, yeah. Good afternoon to you. Good, the best of afternoons to you, sir. How Top of the today? afternoon. I'm very well. Yeah, good. Should be a good show today. We've only got one returning pair and we didn't see much of uh, Serene and Olivia. They got knocked out in the first round, so it was a, a very open field, I think. There's no sport, there's no literature, there's no geography, but the good news for Bob is we do have chartered architectural technology. It's round two. <laughs> very good. Well, thanks, Richard. Now, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. What everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at... £2,250. <laughs> right, let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. Be careful, it's not you. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category this afternoon is rock music. <laughs> Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many U2 singles as they could. U2 singles, Jane and Liz just couldn't be happier. Uh, Richard, what do we need to know? Everybody looks delighted, don't they? We're looking for any single released by U2 or which features them uh, as a co-artist to reach the UK top 40 up to the start of 2011. And there are 40 
answers on the list. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Liz and Jane, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first, you lucky things, Jane. <laughs> Does this mean anything to you? No, cos I get my U2s and my UB40s muddled up and I wouldn't know, <laughs> really, who does what and if I've got the right one. Yeah, but I'm going to... I've got one in mind. OK, very <laughs> good. Red, red wine? Red, red wine. I see what you've done there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's see if that's right. And uh, if it is, let's see how many people said red, red wine. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's hope it's correct. Red, red wine. <laughs> bad luck, it. Jane. Uh, bad, bad luck. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Now, Richard, am I right to think that a U2 is a, is a rocket? It was a spy plane. It was a spy plane. A U2. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very unlucky, Jane. At least you know why you got it wrong. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> you got U2 and UB40 mixed up. It was a UB40 yeah. Yeah. hit. Yeah, turning up the DSS with a, with a spy plane. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Olivia, remember we are looking for U2 singles. Um, we're going to go for Hello, Hello. I have a song called that. I can hear it in my head going around. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. <laughs> hello, Hello. Let's see if that is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. <laughs> Bad luck. Bad luck, Olivia. That also is an incorrect answer, which means you also score the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Olivia. I'll explain why that's an incorrect answer at the end of the round. But in the meantime, at least you've made Jane very happy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I wonder if we've never had four hundreds uh, in a row before, have we? Not till now. <laughs> you, Come on. <laughs> Come on, Bob. You're going to have three. No. I, I've, got, I, I've got some YouTube think... albums and I can't think of a single one off. Bob, the technical architect. Come on. <laughs> oh. I really can't. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye? Yes. <laughs> As opposed to a hello, hello. <laughs> can we fix it, Bob? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. Listen, Bono, if you're watching. <laughs> let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said goodbye. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, Bob, that is an incorrect answer, which means you also score the maximum of 100 points. It really is going very well indeed. Isn't it? I do, cos I know all you two watch the show. And they watch they it together, do. and I know the edge would have been in front of the TV, and the rest will be in the studio. Going, Guys, come, come through, they're doing us. They're doing you too. Let's find out which of our songs is most popular. Yeah. And now they'll just sort of be sitting there with their champagne going slightly yeah. flat, just kind of going, why don't we release some singles called, called Goodbye, Hello, Hello and Red, Red Wine? It's <laughs> great. <laughs> Bob, you just made the edge cry. <laughs> now then, Dan, what's the most obscure U2 <laughs> top five? Do you know what? Just name a U2 single. <laughs> a U2 single. u is my mum's favourite band, and I feel I should really know this, so I'm just deep... Th and there's one that I think I know, but it might just be the name of an album and not a single, and I'm considering just going for a safe one after the display we've had. But no offence, guys. Um, <laughs> I'll risk it. Um, Joshua Tree? Joshua Tree. I've just seen his face, it looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Pointless History. <laughs> Will your mum be watching, Dan? <laughs> Probably, yeah, yeah. Let's see if the Joshua Tree is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it is an album, though, isn't I it? I don't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> Did you all just have an agreement before the show started? <laughs> he said, you know what, should we all just get maximum scores? Um, well, there you are. You score the maximum of 100 points. Look at that, Richard. Yeah. Everyone's got a wrong answer, but you've all got a wrong answer for slightly different reasons, so that's something. You uh, Joshua Tree is a, is a U2 album. OK, let's refocus. Let's pretend that never happened. None of us would ever speak of that again. OK, you'd come up and get a series of pointless answers and cheer U2 up. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round, so let's look at those scores. <laughs> <laughs> you are all on 100 points. <laughs> One of you is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. And, frankly, you have only yourselves to blame. <laughs> we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podiums? 
OK, we are looking for singles by a band called U2. <laughs> right, well, I think I've just about remembered one. Um, linked in with football, I think it was a theme tune to a, a highlights programme, and I'm going to go with Beautiful Day. Beautiful Day. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Beautiful Day. Well done, Danny. Very well done. That scores you 19. It takes your total up to 119. Excellent. Yeah, a yeah. single released by you too. I was, beginning, I was beginning to think they hadn't released any. Uh, beautiful day. Yeah, they, they used it as a theme tune to the Premiership when it was on, uh, on ITV. Phew. Bill. We have a high scorer now. Danny and Dan on 119. If you can score 18 points or less, you will be through for sure to the next round. What do you think, Bill? I bet you know some U2 songs. There's one I, I definitely know is a U2 single. I think it's probably the first one, or one of the first ones they ever did. Uh, in the Name of Love. Here's your red line coming in. Let's see if In the Name of Love gets you below that red line. Good luck, Bill. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's correct. Well done, Bill. Brilliant answer. That's a bit more like it. That scores you three points, takes your total up to 103. It's uh, pride, brackets in the name of love. Uh, very, very good answer. Well done. We are looking for you two top 40 singles, Serini. Mm -hmm. You are on 100 points. Our high scorers are Danny and Dan on 119. Uh, I think seeing as Olivia started with the... I'm going to go with Vertigo, because I think she was thinking of that song. Vertigo? Yeah. Let's see if Vertigo's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Vertigo. Well done, Serini. Very well done indeed. Look at that, six points, brilliant. Very well done indeed. That scores you six, takes your total up to 106. Richard. Yeah, well played, Serini. This is like, like old-school pointless, isn't it, when people got yeah. right answers and that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's a, a number one from 2004, and as you say, I think that's what Olivia was thinking of, because the chorus starts, hello, hello. Very well done. Now then, Liz, this is the moment of truth. This is where Danny and Dan, Liz and Jane, tussle to see who will be leaving us at the end of this round. I'm, I've got one in my head, and I don't know if it's by them, but it's with or without you, is what I'm saying. With or without you. Very good. I'm so glad you didn't start by saying, I always get confused between <laughs> you two <laughs> and the Goombay dance band. <laughs> we are looking for you two singles. You are saying with or without you. You have to score 18 or less with this. There's your red line. Below that red line, through to the next round. Good luck, Liz. But it's right. It's right. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Very, very well done. You had to score 18 points. You did score 18 points. Very well done, Liz. That takes your total up to 118. Richard. Very, very well played, Liz. In fact, well played everybody on that second pass. And just to add insult to injury for Dan and Danny, it's from the Joshua Tree, the album. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. There are lots of pointless answers here uh, for you two. Let's take a look at some of them. Uh, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. It was a number two hit, as was City of Blinding Lights. Discotheque was number one, but uh, still a pointless answer. Three more top ten hits here. Walk On, Sometimes You Can't Make It On Your Own and All Because Of You, All Pointless. Uh, all I Want Is You, Fire, which was their first single. It's the only one of these pointless answers not to be a top ten hit, unbelievably, and Stay Far Away So Close. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. And judging by the standards here, very well done if you named any U2 single. <laughs> so, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is Dan and Danny. The Dans, the Dannies. Ah, oh, so listen. Your, your short time on Pointless, first time round. You'll be back, you'll be back, you'll be back. <laughs> what has it taught you? Don't bring in women next time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we will, we will get all your sport and politics next time round. We'll just have to look forward to that because we say goodbye to you now, but thanks so much for playing. Great contestants. <laughs>
for the remaining pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> now, obviously, only two pairs can make it through to the head-to-head. -head. So, one of the three teams in front of me will be leaving us at the end of this round. Just try and make sure it's not you. OK, our category for round two is... Quotes. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, so our round two question this afternoon concerns famous quotes and the people who said them. Now, in this round, we're about to show you a list of quotes said by or commonly attributed to famous people. We asked 100 people to tell us who said them. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you six quotes on each pass. Uh, the more obscure the quote, the fewer points you're going to score. But if you give us an incorrect answer, you'll score 100 points. Uh, I would almost always never give clues, but I think because that first round was so hard, I will say one thing, which is none of them were said by Bono. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, we are looking for the people who most famously said these quotes. OK, and here we go. We have got... Ich bin ein Berliner. The eagle has landed. I have nothing to declare except my genius. I live and die by my serve. I have a dream. And the ladies not for turning. OK, there they are. I'm going to read them one more time quickly. Ich bin ein Berliner. The eagle has landed. I have nothing to declare except my genius. I live and die by my serve. I have a dream. The ladies not for turning. Liz, there are the quotes. Right. Let's find a nice obscure one on that board and attribute it to somebody correct. I think Ich bin ein Berliner was said by J.F. Kennedy. J.F. Kennedy, Ich bin ein Berliner. OK, well, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. J.F. Kennedy, you're saying. Yes, of course. <laughs> 33. <laughs> Scores you 33. Richard. Uh, yeah, well, well played, Liz. You said it to, uh, to West Berlin as a couple of years after the, uh, the Berlin Wall went up. It's quite a low score, but some of that is explained by the fact that 17 out of our 100 thought Hitler said it. <laughs> now then, Olivia. Now then, Olivia, how comfortable are you feeling with that selection of quotes? Um, fairly confident, but because I am, I'm beginning to doubt myself. <laughs> oh, Olivia, what's going on there? <laughs> I'm going to go for I have nothing to declare except my genius, which I think was Oscar Wilde. You're saying Oscar Wilde, I have nothing to declare except my genius. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Well done. 22. <laughs> Very well done. 22 for that, Olivia. Richard. Well played, Olivia. Reportedly said by him in 1882 at New York Customs Control. But uh, no evidence he actually did ever say it. OK, <laughs> there we are. Here are the quotes behind me. You just have to supply me with the author of these quotes. Bill. Right, I think I know three of them. What, which are they? Um, I think I have a dream, uh, Martin Luther King, the ladies not returning, uh, Margaret Thatcher, the eagle has landed, Neil Armstrong. I live and die by my serve. I imagine it's a tennis player, but I, I, I can't pick that. I think I'll go for Neil Armstrong. OK, Neil Armstrong and... The Eagle has landed. Very good. OK, Neil Armstrong and the Eagle has landed. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see what it scores you. That's right. Very well done. 19, the best score so far. Very well done. Yeah, well played, Bill. So it's a low score, I suspect, probably because he's more famous for saying one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Yeah. So I think maybe people forgot the eagle has landed. Let's take a look at the other answers. You're quite right to choose that one because I have a dream, which, as you say, was Martin Luther King, would have scored you much more, 66 points. The ladies not for turning was Margaret Thatcher, would have scored you 61. Uh, any clues on I live and die, I live and by, die by I live and die by my serve. Yes, that was Bill Gates, because it was one of their early <laughs> dial-up services, wasn't it? My serve. <laughs> and he said, I live and die by my serve. <laughs> no, it's actually Larry Mullen, the drummer from U2. 
Would it? <laughs> was it? Was it Pete Sampras? It is Pete Sampras. Yes, Pete Sampras would have scored you one point. So very well done if you got that at home, Pete Sampras. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Well, that last answer from Bill and Bob, 19. It scored them, lovely low score. Olivia and Serini looking very good on 22. Liz and Jane a little bit out in front there. Jane, you're going to have to find a really nice low-scoring answer to make sure you get through to the head-to-head. -head. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more quotes up on the board, and here they are. We have got, they think it's all over, it is now. We shall fight on the beaches. I have the heart and stomach of a king. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Any colour so long as it's black. We're more popular than Jesus now. Let me just say those again. They think it's all over, it is now. We shall fight on the beaches. I have the heart and stomach of a king. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Any colour so long as it's black. We're more popular than Jesus now. Now, remember, we are looking for the people who famously said these quotes. Now then, Bob, you're the low scorers on 19. The high scorers are Jane and Liz on 33. To be absolutely sure of going through to the head to head, you want to be scoring 13 or less with this. What do you think? OK. Um, I do know, I think I know, a few of those. Finding the most obscure one is difficult. I think I'll go for I have the heart and stomach of a king, which was Elizabeth I. The heart and stomach of a king, Elizabeth I. There is your red line. If you can get below that red line with Elizabeth I, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if she did indeed say that. And if she did, let's see how many people said it. Very good score. That takes your total up to 37. Yeah, good answer, Bob. Said in an address to troops at Tilbury in 1588 when a Spanish invasion was imminent. Serini. Yeah. The high scorers are now Bob and Bill on 37. Mm -hmm. You were on 22. If you can score 14 or less with your answer, you are mm. through to the head-to-head. -head. What are you going to go for, Serini? I'm going to go for We're More Popular Than Jesus Now, and I'm going to go for John Lennon. John Lennon, you're going to say. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that quote. John Lennon. But it's right. 33. Quite a well-known one. Takes your total up to 55. Richard. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a correct answer, Serena, and keeps the pressure on Jane. We're more popular than Jesus now, which was something that uh, Bono was saying this morning, but uh, <laughs> I think you may have to reconsider. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Jane, the high scorers are Serena and Olivia on 55. You have to score 21 or less with this answer. No. I actually think I know all of those. Um, I think they think it's all over it is now as Kenneth Worston home. And we shall fight on the beaches. That was obviously Churchill. Um, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee was Muhammad Ali. And any colour as long as it's black was Henry Ford. Um, I think I'll go for the Henry Ford one. Any colour so long as it's black. Henry, Henry Ford, Ford, you're going to say. You have to score 21 or less. Here's your red line. If Henry Ford can get you below that red line, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Good luck. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Henry Ford for that quote. Is right. How well known is the quote? Oh! <laughs> Surprisingly high score there, Jane. That scores you 34 and takes your total up to 67. Richard. Uh, yeah, unlucky, Jane. You went through the whole board. You got every single one right, and one of those answers would have kept you in the round as well. Which one? Uh, it would have been that they think it's all over. It is now, ironically. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely right. It was Kenneth Wilson yes. home said about Jeff Hurst's third goal would have scored you 15 points. Uh, the other two were big scorers, though. Uh, we shall fight on the beaches was uh, Churchill, of course. He'd uh, been Prime Minister less than a month when he said that, 83 points. And float like a butterfly, sting like a bee was uh, Muhammad Ali, uh, which would have scored you a very big 79. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, it's Liz and Jane 
Oh dear, that makes it a bit harder, doesn't it? Knowing the Kenneth Wilson home quote would have got you through. Well, I, well, it does really. Yes. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very, honest, yes. it's a very well-known yes. quote. I'm not sure anyone. Yes. How many people well, really know well, who I'm, said it? I'm old enough. To, I watched the World Cup final on television, oh. so I can remember him saying it. Oh. <laughs> well, we will see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. But thank you, meanwhile, for playing. Thank It'd be you an very excellent much. contestant. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are going to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> very well done, Bob and Bill, Serini and Olivia. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to the final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. <laughs> now, you're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair, and you will win that question. The pair that gets first to the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Monopoly squares between go and in jail as they could. Monopoly squares between go and in jail. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any of the nine squares between go and in jail in the standard UK Monopoly board. We won't accept just visiting as that's on the in jail square. So any of the nine squares between go and in jail. OK, thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Bob and Bill, because you played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. We are looking for those Monopoly squares, the nine Monopoly squares that appear between go and in jail. Mm -hmm. Whitechapel. 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 Yeah. Serini and Olivia. We think there's Old Kent Road is the first one. And then we're not sure of the second dark, dark brown. And then we know there are three light blue ones. What about the station? The station is it King's Cross? I, could I not thought be... Charing Cross. So Charing Cross. I, it could... I always get those two mixed up, like with Harry Potter. I always think <laughs> it's the other one. <laughs> okay. um, what do you think, Angel Islington? The Angel Islington is a light blue one. Should we go for that? Yeah. Um, we're going to go for Angel of. Was it Angel of Islington? Or Angel... Angel Islington. Angel Islington. <laughs> the Angel Islington. Okay. So we have Whitechapel. And we have the Angel Islington. Bob and Bill have gone for Whitechapel. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said Whitechapel. Well done. That's right. Ten. OK, Serini and Olivia have gone for the Angel Islington. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said the Angel Islington. Down it goes. Oh, nine! Very, very well done. The Angel Islington scores you just nine after the first question. It's 1-0 to Serini and Olivia. Richard? Yes, very well played. Two good answers. It's Whitechapel, we, we, we would accept. It's Whitechapel Road. And the Angel Islington was where the, uh, the people from Waddington's first sat down to work out what locations they'd use for the UK board. Uh, there's a couple of low scorers here, a couple of low scorers that would have won the points. Income tax, three. It was King's Cross Station, not, uh, not Charing Cross Station. That would have scored you six. Euston Road also would have scored you six. The Angel Islington, nine. Whitechapel Road, ten. Community Chest 11, and then Pentonville Road 13, Chance 14, and the other one you were thinking of, Old Kent Road, would have been 42, the top of the pile. Thanks very much, Richard. So here is your second question. Bob and Bill, you have to win this question to stay in the game. Serene and Olivia, if you win this question, you are straight through to the final. We'll be playing for that £2,250 jackpot. OK, here is your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many presenters of the BBC's film programme as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for any of the seven people who've been the presenter of the BBC film programme all the way through from film 71 right up to film 2011. We won't accept stand-ins and guest hosts for sort of individual episodes, but seven hosts from 71 all the way through to 2011. OK, now then, Serini and Olivia, you go first on this one. Is 
Yes. <laughs> um, we're going to go for Claudia Winkleman. Claudia Winkleman, you're saying? Yeah. OK, Bob and Bill. Claudia Winkleman is off the table. Yeah, we know a couple of them. Um, we're still going to go for Barry Norman. You're going to go for Barry Norman? Yeah. Claudia Winkleman from Serini and Olivia and Barry Norman from Bob and Bill. Claudia Winkleman, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that. <laughs> 26. <laughs> now, Bob and Bill, you've gone for Barry Norman. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew Barry Norman. Oh, well done. Well done, Bob and Bill. That was what you needed. Barry Norman beats it 24 to 26, so after two questions, you are absolutely like as you lie on one point apiece. Richard. Yeah, it's been very, very close on both questions now. Uh, there's three obvious ones here, but four uh, slightly less obvious. There's three pointless answers here as well, right from the early days of uh, the film programme. Let's take a look. Joan Bakewell, who presented briefly in 72 and 73. Jackie Gillett, who was the uh, original presenter of film 71. Frederick Raphael, the uh, writer and author, he was also pointless. Danny Lee, the Guardian film critic who, uh, who co-hosts with Claudia Winkleman, he would have scored you one point. And then the three big scorers, Barry Norman, 24, he presented for 26 years, Claudia Winkleman, 26, and Jonathan Ross, the most memorable of them all, on 32. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, here is your third question. Whoever wins this question will be through to the final and playing for that jackpot of £2,250. OK, good luck. Here it comes, question three. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many children of Brangelina as they could. Children of Brangelina. Richard. Uh, yeah, we're looking for any of the six children either born to or adopted by Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Uh, with the adopted kids, we're looking for their names as they are now rather than the birth names. And that's as of the start of 2011. OK, thank you very much indeed. Bob and Bill, you are going to go first. We're not very good at celebrities. Um... <laughs> David. <laughs> David Jelena. Yeah. David, OK, you're going to go for David. Now, Serini and Olivia. Well, I don't know any. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> um, I know that sh I think she had Mad Duck or Lennox, or both. And I know that she, like, her and Brad Pitt had Shiloh, because I remember thinking that... I, and I think there was twins, and I think the girl was called Vivian. Just go for one that you're definitely sure. So, yeah, yeah for Shiloh. Shiloh. OK, Shiloh. Shiloh, you're going to say. OK, we have David and we have Shiloh. Whoever wins this question is through to the final. We'll be playing for that jackpot. OK, Bob and Bill went with David. <laughs> Listen, you never know. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you do know. Sometimes you do. Uh, David, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said David. Oh. 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 Bad luck, <laughs> Bob and down. Bill. Uh, Serini and Olivia, you have gone for Shiloh. All that matters at this stage is that it is right. And if it is right, you are straight through to the final. Very well done. <laughs> 11. But that's academic. It only had to be right, and it was right. So after the third question, Serena and Olivia, you are through to the final. 2-1. Richard. Uh, yeah, uh, unlucky guys. Madonna had, a, had an adopted uh, child, David, of course. Just the wrong celebrity, that's all. <laughs> <Doesn't> <laughs> right. um, there are uh, the twins down at the bottom. Knox with two and Vivienne with five. Sahara on six, Pax on seven, uh, Shiloh 11, and the Maddox right at the top there on 14. Okay, well, thank you very much. So the losing pair at the end of the head to head is Bob and Bill. Dear, it was very, very close, extremely exciting in the first two questions, and then sadly, we just went a bit off piste with you. It's a fair you? cup, Gov. They play better than us. <laughs> yeah, well, well played. Good luck. Yeah, well done. Very well done.
Well, it's been great having you on the show, Bob and Bill, and we will get to see you next time, which we shall look forward to. Uh, but meanwhile, thanks very much. Great contestants. Thank you. Thank you. But for Serene and Olivia, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £2,250. <laughs> well, congratulations, Serene and Olivia. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy, so very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,250. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. We haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You only have to find one now, and you will go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category. And you can choose from these three options. Here we are. You've got British actresses, opera or fashion? British actresses, opera or fashion, what do you think? Well, you're a design student, so fashion will completely be on you. Um, I, opera I'm going to rule out, because I only know like, the obvious yeah, ones. Yeah, I agree. Do you think British actresses? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah, British actresses. Well, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Julie Walters films as they could. Julie Walters films, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Julie Walters has received an acting credit or a voice credit for an animated film. As always, we're not looking for short films, TV films or documentaries. Just any feature film made starring Julie Walters. There are 30 films on the list up to the beginning of 2011. OK, thank you very much. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers and all you need to win that jackpot of £2,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Um, obviously. Yeah. Billy Elliot, the Harry Potter series. Mm -hmm. And then she was... Educating Rita was her first film, which yeah, was really she good in it. And has she done any voice acting? She probably has. She's really recognisable. She's like... I don't know. Educating Rita. Which Harry Potter has been all of them? Yeah, all of them are the most what's obscure. A, what's an unusual Harry Potter one? Um, I think... Goblet of Fire? I don't know. What's the one that's the, Amer the American one? That's... The Philosopher's Stone, sort of the source... Yeah. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, that's the first one. Mm-hmm. Maybe the third one. Yeah. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban. Should we go for the Goblet of Fire? Yeah. And what? The Prisoner of Azkaban? Yeah. And, and then do you want to go for Educating Rita? Yeah. She was really like it was an amazing. She I can't think of any others. I can. I have. Apart from the obvious, really obvious one. Billy Elliot. That's too obvious, I think. Yeah. Five seconds left. Really <laughs> Pick a random film. I can just <laughs> hope she didn't voice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's your minute up. I now need your three answers. We were looking for Julie Walters films. Um, well, we're going to go for the. Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter series, The Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. And um, we're going to go for Educating Rita. Educating Rita. What was the third one? Um, it was another Harry Potter one. The um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone. OK. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a point? Probably Educating Rita. OK, we'll put that last. Yeah. Which of the two Harry Potter should we put first, the one you're least confident in? Um, probably The Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. OK, yeah. Goblet of Fire. Philosopher's Stone, Educating Rita. We'll put them up in that order. We have The Goblet of Fire, The Philosopher's Stone and Educating Rita. There we are, two Harry Potter films in your trio. We were looking for Julie Walters films. You said this was the answer you had the least faith in. You only have to find one pointless answer to win that £2,250 jackpot. Let's see if the Goblet of Fire is right. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Ooh! Wow. And there we are. Turns out not to be, not to be a correct answer. So, unfortunately, that's not a pointless answer. Bit of a surprise there. Yeah. Maybe we just don't know who Julie Walters is. Yeah. Maybe she's not in Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Serene does anyone. <laughs> OK, here's your second answer. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> now we know that she wasn't in The Goblet of Fire, how are we feeling about the Philosopher's Stone? Well, she has to be in the first one because 
they go they say goodbye when they go to Hogwarts, don't they? I'm assuming. I mean, they're quite young in the first one, so they'll need a parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it's right, and if it is, let's hope nobody said it. This is your second answer. The Philosopher's Stone. This has to be pointless and correct for you to win the jackpot of £2,250. Let's see how many people said it. That's more like it. There we are. It's correct. Let's discover how many of our 100 people know their Harry Potter. Down it comes in the 30s, 20s, teens. Single figures, look at that. Four. <laughs> wow. Time to take stock of our position. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone scored only four points. Yeah. Who knows what they know about educating Rita? £2,250. What would you do with that? We want to go to New York. So, yeah, we'd spend the money on a holiday. And... Very, very good. OK, we only have one more chance to win that jackpot of £2,250. Educating Rita, it's all riding on that. We were looking for Julie Walters' movies. You said this was the answer you had the most faith in. This for that jackpot, £2,250. Let's see if Educating Rita is right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Well, it's right. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone went all the way down to four. Let's see. Oh, no! Oh. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that crucial, pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £2,250, which rolls over to the next show. But you have been amazing contestants, and you do, of course, get to take home our pointless trophy. <laughs> so, Richard... Yeah, well, uh, I mean, very well played throughout. Educating Rita was actually the most popular answer of all, closely followed by uh, Mamma Mia, Billy Elliot and Calendar Girls. Goblet of Fire was the only Harry Potter film she wasn't in. She's in all the others, but not Goblet of Fire, but they, they all scored much the same as uh, Philosopher's Stone. Let's take a look at the pointless answers, though. There were, there were a fair few. Uh, before you go, Dream Child, where she plays the voice of a dormouse. Girls' Night with Brenda Blethyn, all of those are pointless. Intimate Relations and Just Like a Woman, she plays a landlady in both of those, and both were pointless. Mickey Bo and Me, she's Mickey Bo's mother, that's a pointless answer. Uh, Prick Up Your Ears, the Joe Orton biopic, she plays uh, his mother as well, that's uh, pointless. Stepping Out with Liza Minnelli, Titanic Town, where she plays a Belfast peace campaigner, they were all pointless. Very well done if you said any of those at home. OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, Serene and Olivia, um, but it's been fantastic having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> So nobody's won our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £3,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.